wonder hussy here. You can see I'm in my favorite place, the middle of nowhere, as usual. What else is new? Today we're checking out some craters. When's the last time you went and checked out some craters? Well, I just happen to be in a part of Nevada that's rife with craters. And there's two particularly noteworthy craters uh, within a relatively close distance of each other. And the first one is right behind me. It's the Lunar Crater. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what's the Lunar Crater and why are you there? Well, it was designated a, oh gosh, a National Historic Landmark, I think, in 1973, because, well, it's basically this giant friggin' crater in the ground that was used to train the Apollo astronauts in preparation for uh, one of their moon landings in 1973. I guess NASA, which I recently found out from a conspiracy theory friend of mine, stands for never a straight answer. NASA sent a bunch of astronauts out here to train in their little lunar rover for the type of terrain that they might experience on the moon. Now check this out. Okay, now just to give you an idea of the landscape here and what we're dealing with, that's the way we just came. You can see it's just a whole lot of nothing. Some cinder cones, volcanic looking activity. There's a little scenic road that runs around the lunar crater. And here it is, the lunar crater. And of course there's this helpful sign to tell you exactly where you are in case you can't figure it out. Okay guys, are you ready to take a peek inside the lunar crater? <laughs> I know I am, let's go. Okay, so it's pretty easy to get to this lunar crater. You just drive up this dirt road and then there's like a little parking area there where my rig is by this helpful sign. And then, well, there's a little trail that leads to a bench. You can sit and look at the crater, but I'm just gonna walk over here to the edge because, well, I'm here anyways. Wow, this is intense. This kind of reminds me of Ubahibi Crater out in Death Valley. <laughs> I'm not sure if they ever trained any astronauts in Ubahibi Crater though, like they did here. Wow, wait, look at this thing. I mean, apologies, it's kind of backlit because of where the sun is right now, but whoo you can see. This is a big crater. I think they said it's 400 acres. And I guess they actually drove the lunar rover. You know that little car they drive on the moon? That is if, unlike my conspiracy theory buddy, you actually believe we landed on the moon. Anyway, they actually drove that little thing, I guess, back and forth across this just to practice, you know, with the terrain. Because, gosh, it's pretty steep sides, and I guess they were anticipating this size of craters on the actual moon. I'm not sure if that's what they actually found or what. I mean, when you look at the moon in the night sky, you do see that it's pretty pockmarked. But, gosh, I'm not sure. I wonder if there's, like, a trail that you could hike to the bottom of this crater. I mean... I don't have time right now because it's getting kind of late in the day. And to be honest, I'm not sure I want to hike all the way out of a friggin' 400 acre lunar crater right now. I already got some exercise today, but it would be kind of cool to come out here under a full moon and, oh, I don't know, drink some tea or something in the bottom of the lunar crater. Hmm, how about that? Oh, you could have the most awesome space rave. I have this really cool friend, Dimitri, who has a pretty authentic looking astronaut outfit. In fact, he wears it at parties and at Burning Man. He'll wear it at the, the Burning Man Festival, like really early in the morning when the sun first comes up. <laughs> he'll go walking across the farthest reaches of the playa out there in this astronaut outfit with the whole, you know, mirrored visor and everything. So all these like hippies and, you know, drunk ravers that are stumbling home are like, Wah! Anyway, Dimitri uh, and a bunch of his friends could bring astronaut outfits and, oh my God, we could have the most epic party at the bottom of this crater. That would really take some planning and I'm not sure the BLM or whoever maintains this site would allow such a thing, but hey, it was almost as fun talking about it as it was actually having the party itself. Okay, you can see my car up there. I did actually hike part of the way down and I mean, it really wouldn't be that hard to hike out of this thing. It's not that steep. You know, it's pretty gradual for most of it till you get to that, like little escarpment thing, but you could do it. Like I said, I just don't have time today. Okay, I'm gonna walk over and check out this little viewing bench. Maybe there's like a particularly good view from it or something. But while I'm walking over there, I did check Wikipedia and this is actually, it's not a National Historic Landmark, it's a National 
natural landmark. Well, that makes sense. So forgive me for that. Also, if you're interested, according to Wikipedia, the astronauts that trained here were John Young, Charlie Duke, Gene Cernan, and Jack Schmidt. <laughs> I've actually never heard of any of those guys. But then again, I'm not big on astronauts. I guess I only know like Buzz Aldrin and the big names. Anyway, we're here at the bench. It's cool that they actually put this bench here for people to sit on so you can, you know, just sort of contemplate this giant pit in front of you. Or, you know, contemplate your own mortality or any number of things. Anyway, this thing is what's known in, I guess, geology terms as a mar. I learned a new word while I was researching this. M-A-A-R. I guess it's the name for a shallow flat-bottomed crater caused by some kind of volcanic explosion. Because this crater was naturally created by, I guess, a series of volcanic explosions. I mean, like I was pointing out earlier, you can see the whole landscape is very volcanic. In fact, on the other side of the highway, I passed a black lava flow drive. You can drive around a big black flow of lava if that's what floats your boat. <laughs> and to be honest, it does float my boat. I just didn't have enough daylight to do that and this and then the next crater we're about to go to. Anyway, this other crater isn't too far away from here. I think it's only about 25 miles or so. So I'm going to jump in the car and drive over there and explain everything to you when we get there. Oh my god, these cows out here all just had calves. And there's little tiny baby calves all over the friggin' sagebrush out here. Hi little babies, I love you. Oh my god, look at him. Don't worry, I won't hurt you guys. I'll just pass along. Oh my god, they're so cute. Oh man, I just had a steak the other night too. <laughs> Okay, now we've arrived at the site of the second crater, and this one is not naturally occurring. This one was created by man in all his misguided, bumbling fury. Okay, what the hell am I talking about? Now you might not even be able to tell that there's a crater here because it's pretty gradual. You can sort of see a slope there and then apologies I know the sun is going to be right behind the camera but you can kind of see the, I'm sort of following the rim of this crater around and it's well like all craters it's circular and in the middle of this crater well there's this strange monolith. Check this out this is one of the weirdest sites I've ever explored. This monolith <laughs> if you want to call it that, marks the site of a thermonuclear explosion. Okay, it's actually not a monolith. This is a giant metal tube that they jammed into the earth to drop a thermonuclear warhead into so they could blow it up underground. Okay, there's a sign here. You can pause it and read the whole thing if you want. But basically it tells you this was part of Project Faultless. On January 19th, 1968, a nuclear detonation was conducted below this spot at a depth of 3,200 feet. I was reading that, I guess there's some old mining chamber underground that they, well, they decided it would be a good idea to blow up a nuke in it just to see what would happen. I'm guessing, well, there's a lot of mining activity in this area, and then there's these mountains right here behind us, so... Gosh, I don't know what they were mining underground here back in the day, but apparently they left, they left a big chamber behind. Big enough for them to plop a nuke into. Anyway, it says, uh, This device with a yield of less than one megaton was detonated to determine the environmental and structural effects that might be expected should subsequent higher yield underground nuclear tests be conducted in this vicinity. 
Okay, so they're basically just uh, playing around to see what would happen, which is what they do out here in the central Nevada wastelands. It's a shame, too, because it's such beautiful country, and there's so many amazing hot springs, and all these cute little baby cows running around. But, hey, they got to test them nukes somewhere, and, well, I guess there's not a lot of people out here to protest. Now, incidentally, this wasn't always a crater. Like I said, it's man-made. When they dropped the nuke down, the top of the metal tube here was flush with the ground around it. It wasn't sticking up like this. It was just a, a flat hole in the ground. But <laughs> after the bomb went off and vaporized the mine chamber below, well, the ground sort of collapsed around it, creating this crater. Anyway, I think it's interesting too how it says, uh, no excavation, drilling, and or removal of materials is permitted without U.S. government approval within a horizontal distance of 3,300 feet from the surface. So basically what they're saying is <laughs> you can't dig down and take some radioactive ground home with you, unfortunately. And it's creepy too. There's all these like, well, to me, they're pretty creepy white pillars marking the area all around that says... Uh, warning, petroleum contaminated soil or something like that. I'm not sure why it's, if that was a different thing or had to do with this, but whatever the case, I am not taking any of this dirt home with me, I assure you. <laughs> in fact, well, it's getting late in the day and I was thinking about camping here, but it'd be kind of a spooky place to camp. I mean, look, somebody spray painted all these creepy, well, it looks like ghosts that are escaping. I'm not sure if those are ghosts or if that's a swastika, or if those are swastika ghosts. But then, look, somebody came here and oh, spray painted, I guess, vampire on here. So between the vampires, the ghosts, the Nazi ghosts, and the radioactivity, I don't think I would get a very good night's sleep here, which is a shame because like I was saying a minute ago, golly, it's just so beautiful. I mean, look at this high sagebrush plain. Whoo wee. I mean, I know they got a, or I don't know they gotta, but I suppose they had to test their nuke somewhere. And well, I guess this test wasn't actually considered successful because something to do with the way the ground faulted after the explosion. So they actually did the following tests up in Alaska where there's even fewer people to protest. Anyway, you're not allowed to climb into the pit either, which you can't. If you can see at the top, it's all concreted over. You can't get in through there. Not that you'd want to, but, you know, there are some YouTubers who probably would try to do that. And then look at what's interesting, too, is look at the bottom. That friggin' concrete foundation around it. Well, look, some dim-witted cholo even came out here and tagged all the way out here. And we are hundreds of miles from anywhere. Wow, look at this, though. I th this looks like people have been chipping away trying to get down in there. Like, why, dude? Why would you? And then somebody wrote here, life out there. Gosh, maybe it said something else under it before, but it doesn't now. I don't know what that means. And then it looks like there's some really faint graffiti that says something and takes all away. Wait, let me back up. Maybe I can read it. Oh, here we go. Time gives all and takes all away. Dreamland. Wow, that's kind of spooky. I mean, look at this. Speaking of spooky, <laughs> yikes. My car is going to need a radioactivity bath after visiting this place. So are my boots for that matter. Then look here. There's like these weird uh, concrete foundations. Like there used to be some kind of poles stuck there. Not sure why they were removed. Looks like somebody tried to stuff a beer can into one of them. Hey y'all, let's go drink some natty, or some, excuse me, some Keystone Light down by the old Project Faultless marker. Now, does that sound like a good time or what? Then look over here, here's another little concrete pad. I wonder what this had on it. Gosh, all this, these mysterious ruins. What could it have been? Anyway, this concludes our tour of two craters. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and please remember to collect all your belongings as you exit the vehicle. <laughs> Seriously though, I mean, gosh, I think it only took me about 20 minutes to get from the lunar crater to this bad boy. So if you're into craters, <laughs> and you've already been to Craters of the Moon up in Idaho, and you've already been to Crater Lake, and you're looking for some new craters, well, I'm here to tell you that Central Nevada is your spot. <laughs> You want craters? We got craters.
all kind of craters. Whew. It's chilly here and it's spooky and I need to go find a place to camp that is non-radioactive. So gosh, I guess I'm going to get back in the old rig and see where the road takes me. Never know what you're going to find out here. Stay tuned.